Now, Mr. Wizard's not his real name, but that's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the mystery and magic of science in everyday living. Oh, uh, Willie, one of the kids in the neighborhood, is coming in the door right now. So let's join him and watch Mr. Wizard. Hi, Mr. Wizard. Oh, hi, Willie. Hey, Mr. Wizard. Yeah? I can show you. Yeah? Well, this. Yeah? How's that? Well, well, leans right over the edge, does it? Yep. How'd you do that? Oh, that was simple. All you do is puncture two holes, one on each end of the edge. Then you blow out the contents. Mm -hmm. Then you fill the other one end up with candle wax, you know. And then you put BB shot or, you know, buckshot or anything like that in there to weight it down. Then you cover up the other hole, and there you are. And what you've done with the buckshot is to lower the center of gravity so that it will be balanced even though the edge of the egg is hanging over the edge of the table. And you know how I know how to do it, Mr. Wizard? Ah. Mr. Wizard's science secrets book. Oh, well, good. I'm glad you had a lot of fun with that because you'll have a lot of fun with all the other exciting and interesting experiments. And when you've done them all, you'll know a lot more about Mr. Wizard's science secrets. Uh, say, Mr. Wizard, mm -hmm. what's that bell uh, ringing, you know, where I came in and that? Well, that was a bell down here. Down there? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Right here? See any batteries here? Well, let's see now. Uh-uh. See no. any batteries here? Uh-uh. None in there, none in here. Well? In spite of the fact that there are no batteries here, and there are no batteries here, and there's no oh. connection between these two, Positively. we're going to be able to ring this doorbell. Here, yeah. you hold it up there. You simply put this coil inside this one when I turn the current on here. Okay. Say, look at that. Now, can you figure out why? Mm. Gee, no, Mr. Wizard. This has something to do with induced current and transformers. Does that give you any clue? Transformer. You know how a transformer works? Well, I think so. I'm not too sure. I took one apart when I was small and yeah. it sort of ruined it, but there was there was a coil in it, like right. an electromagnet maybe. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wires in there. Well, it has a lot to do with coils and wires because that's how a transformer works. Oh. But before we find out how a transformer works, I want you to realize how important they are in your everyday life. They are, Mr. Well, over here, I've got some very interesting transformers, very big ones. Gee, you see, when they make electric current, uh, they generate it at a, at a powerhouse of some kind, you see. And then they, the voltage that they send it out over the wires in the country, mm -hmm. oh, 69,000 volts. Very, very, oh. very dangerous. Ooh. In fact, haven't you ever driven by little places like these? Oh, sure. We got one about three blocks from our house. Mm -hmm. A substation. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, you see, what they have to do is take this very dangerous current that's so very high voltage and get it down so eventually you can use it. Yeah, you couldn't have that trouble. kind of voltage in your house. Mm -hmm. So they use a transformer down here to change yeah. it to... Oh, about 7,200 volts. Well, well, that's, that's still, still pretty okay, dangerous. Huh? So then they run wires from these kind of transformers up over here to a big one like this, which you've probably seen. Oh, sure. You know, in, in the L.A., they, they just put a brand new one up on a tall pole. Up on the pole, that's right. Sure. What happens here is 7,200 volts comes in up on this side, and in the back, out of the back comes 120 volts. Oh, the stuff we use, you the know. The stuff we use in the house. Yeah. So you see, it's because of transformers that you can... Uh, Toast toast, mm -hmm. uh, run the washing machine, listen to the radio, watch television, yeah. uh, even run electric trains. Yeah. But you can't use that 120 volts, the same thing that you use for toasters. Because you see, you, when you play with electric train, there's a lot of uh, tracks are, are alive with electricity. Yeah, so if you're you touch it, it will be very bad. So we have to then change the electric current from 120 down to about 6. Is that and what they use that another type of transformer. Oh. So you see, uh, transformers are very important to you because you have to juggle the amount of voltage that the current uh, is being pushed by. Mm -hmm. See, it's uh, voltage is kind of like pressure. Pressure. So, you know, how do they just go about making transformers that will vary the pressure or voltage? Well, how can they do that, Mr. Wizard? Well, let's take a look at it. Here. Okay. You mentioned something about electromagnetism in that one that you took apart. Yeah. Well, let's take another look at that, like this thing right here. Now, what's that? Well, it's an electromagnet, Mr. Wizard. It's got a nail and wear. That's well, right. When, well we run a, when we run a current through there, we're going to create magnetism around the coils, and it'll sort of be funneled or, or made stronger by the iron core. Mm -hmm. Well, let's connect it up to make sure okay. that we have an electromagnet here. You take the electromagnet, mm -hmm. and I'll connect up these batteries so we can run our current through it. Uh -huh. Now, here, you uh, touch one wire to this pole right here, but before you do that, put the, uh, put the nail inside the box of tech. Now connect the wire. Okay. Let me sure I got it. Okay? Mm-hmm. 
box. Gee. All box full yes. of tacks. Look at that. All kind of electromagnetic. Uh, all right. Now, now disconnect the current. No more magnetism. No more well, magnetism. Well, because this is soft iron, you get a couple hanging on the end because eventually you make the nail a permanent magnet. Oh, okay, you now, you see what we've done is shown that when current goes through these coils, we set up a magnetic field around the coil of wire. Yeah. Now, doesn't it seem logical that if we could have magnetism around the coil, we could make a current flow through the wire? Sounds like Just backwards. Yeah. When we have current going through, we have magnetism. Now, all right, let's take that current away. Now, put magnetism out here, we'll get a current. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see if we can actually do that. Sort of confusing, but... Sort of confusing, but maybe this will make it clear for you. If we have magnetism moving through this coil over here, sure. this coil being connected as it is down here to these two binding posts, and these two binding posts are connected over here to this meter, which is a galvanometer. We used it once before, didn't we? Mm -hmm. When we were talking about tape recording. That's mm -hmm. right. So you should be able, or shouldn't be surprised at least, at what happens when you run this permanent magnet through this coil of wire. Go ahead, run it through there. Okay. Does the needle move? Yeah, it goes up and down, Mr. Wizard. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take a, a very close look at what happens when we do this. Notice that as long as we move the magnet, we have movement of the needle. Sure. But watch ha what happens when I stop. It goes back to normal. That's right. It goes back to the center, even though the magnet is still here. Gee. <laughs> so here is the principle behind this. Here's the reason why it doesn't move. In order to generate a current in a coil of wire like this with a magnetic field, you have to have a moving magnetic field so that the lines of magnetism are cut across these Coil. Oh, well, so That's all we have to keep it moving back and forth. That's right. Good. Now, notice. It started tiresome, it? Well, it certainly would, and we've got ways of getting around that, as you'll oh. see. Now, watch what also happens when I move the magnet out this way. See which way the needle goes? Went this way. That way. Watch what happens when I move the magnet the other way. It went that it way. It went that way. So it also makes a difference what direction the lines of magnetic field cut across the wires. North and south poles. And it will also change the direction of current. Right. Well, now we've put an ordinary magnet here in this coil. Yeah. What will happen if we put our electromagnet in here? Won't it increase it? Well, let's try it. We certainly ought to get at least the same result, shouldn't we? Mm -hmm. You hold the electromagnet and get it ready to put it, run it through the hole in that wire, and I'll connect it up for you. Now, it work, Mr. see what happens to the meter. Okay. Yeah, it goes back and forth. Goes back and forth. Uh-huh. Okay, now you see what we've done is we've used an electric current here Sure. To run it through this, through the, and the, to create a magnetic field around this wire, mm -hmm. to cut across the, the lines, the, the field, lines of force cut across through these wires, and we generated a current. Well, now let's eliminate both these coils. Well, then how are you going to do it? Well, here's what we'll do. What would happen if we broke this, this uh, wire here in the middle, and used one half for this coil, and used the other half for the electromagnetic coil? Well, it would be it much easier. Work. See, it okay. would be much easier. That's right. Well, I've already done that here. Oh, but See? this one has a lot more turns of wire. This one has a lot more turns. Well, you notice how many this one has around it? Oh. So what I've done, you see, oh, I... is have few turns over here to create our magnetism and a lot of turns over here to catch, sort of catch that magnetism, let's say, and generate a current. So let's And then attach, bring it down into the meter. Let's attach the big side over here to the meter. You can do it right with these clips here. Oh, okay. Hmm. Let's see There's one. Let me get the other. Okay. Okay, now let's bring this over here so you can hold this up. And I'll connect the electromagnetic end over here, and you watch what happens through the coils over here, over here on the meter. Hope it works. Yeah, it works just a little bit, but... Just a little bit. It goes back and forth. Though. Back and forth. Yeah, I thought it was going to go way far and back. Way far. Well, it won't for this reason. Because even though we have made a transformer, did you realize we've made a transformer here? Did we, Mr. Yeah, this is a transformer. We've made a transformer, but it's not a very efficient one because we just look use like a one. nail. That's why we're not getting much current there. But we'll get more current in a minute. But the, let's see now what we know about a transformer as a result of these experiments that we've done. First of all, we have two coils. One on one side where the current is going through and another one on the other side where other cuts of current are coming out. This first coil here is called the primary. Primer. This one down here is called the secondary. Secondary. The one primary. the current goes into is the, is the primary. Current goes now, into the primary. If we have 10 turns of wire in the primary. 10 turns there. And we have 20 turns here in the secondary. Sure. We'll increase the voltage. 10 times. Twice as much. Twice. 10 to 20. 10 to 20. 10 to 20. See? So if we have few here and lots here, our voltage is going up. Mm -hmm. Now then, if we have lots of turns here in the primary, let's say 20 in the primary. Yeah. And we have... 10 down here, what's going to happen to the voltage? 
We're decreasing it. Down. We're down. Mm -hmm. And so when we have a coil here and lots more turns in the coil here, we have a step up transformer. The voltage goes step from... Step up and a step down. And a step down. Mm -hmm. You've heard those turns, haven't you? Step up. Well, step, step up the current. Yeah. Oh, That's what sure. we're doing. Now, in spite of the fact that we're changing the voltage from, let's say, to 10 volts to 20 volts, we're not gaining anything. Only we're doing, all we're doing is changing the voltage because the total amount of current that will flow through this wire, you can't get any more current out of this one because as you increase the voltage, the amount of current goes down. So all we're doing is changing the characteristics of that oh. by just increasing the voltage. But the amperage or the amount of current goes down. Goes well, now down, that's how, down, down that's secondary how and primary. primary. So now you understand a little bit about how a transformer works. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, did you notice that when we ran the magnet back and forth through here like this, sure. We had to have the transformer, uh, the, the magnet moving. And you notice when we connect this up, we have to make the circuit. And when we hold it on there, when I hold the current on here like this, what happens to the meter? Nothing. Huh? Nothing. Now it stays think, there. It just stays there. So you got to keep that moving. Mm -hmm. That's because when we run a current through here, as we connect the current, the current starts running through here and builds up a magnetic field. And that means the magnetic field is moving oh. as it builds up. So that's... Just like when we move the magnet here. And when I turn the current off, the magnetic field is collapsing. So it's also moving and cutting these lines, just like when I move the magnet the other way. So that's what you So mean. you've got, in order to have an uh, electromagnet like this, you've got to make and break, make and break, make, make and break, 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 break very break. fast. Mm -hmm. Well, now, this is kind of a, a, a silly crude. way to do it, back and forth, back primitive, and forth. Primitive, shall we say. Very crude and primitive. But I think we'll illustrate the point. So let's now, instead of doing this by hand, let's use a vibrator. Vibrator? Something that vibrates back and forth. You say fast. that would do it. That would do it, wouldn't it? And there's one right over here. Where? Right here. Now the vibrator is kind of inside this in the back, so we can't see it. But uh, here's what's going to happen. Here we have one, two, three, four, five batteries at a uh, volt and a half a piece. Uh, seven and a half. Seven and a half volts. Put your hands across here. Sure. Yeah. You, you know, shock from seven and a half volts. Oh. No sparks jumping or anything. But now when we take the seven and a half volts. Run them through the primary with, a, with this vibrator that's inside, making and breaking the current very fast to build up and break down the magnetic field. Seven and a half volts to the primary, which has a few turns around it. And we have a secondary that has lots of turns. Which yeah, way is the voltage sure, gone? Over there. Uh, up. up. We're going to step up the, the, the current from these batteries to 25,000 volts. 20, from right. seven and a half to about 25,000. That's an awful lot from just these seven and a half. Right. We're using a transformer. Step up this time. In fact, we're going to generate so much current, so much voltage, that we're going to be able to jump all the way across from this wire down to this ice pick. Hmm. Well, just the current from these batteries. Wow. Okay, watch. I want to give this a little twist so it starts moving, and then you will see the current. Whoops. Moved it all the way out. <laughs> that won't do it. Now, something is wrong. We'll have to check our current and see what's happening to it. All right, current coming through here, going through here. Yeah. Let's check all of these. Mm -hmm. Here was a loose connection. Let's see if that did it. That did it. Yeah. Now, just the current from these batteries, seven and a half volts, build up through a transformer to 2,500 about, or 25,000. Really now, we've used this awful. before, but we called it a spark coil before yeah. it didn't. Actually, it's a form of transformer. Now, how would you like to be able to use this 25,000 volts and be able to write your initial, Mr. W, right in the middle of a piece of paper? I don't think so. Well, come on around here, and you'll find that it's not so difficult after all. Yeah, but don't you think that 25,000 volts is it could practically knock you through the wall? Well, now, don't forget that in spite of the fact that we're increasing it from 7.5 to 25,000, remember what happens to the amperage or, or the amount of current? It went down when yeah. we use a transformer. Well, so even though we've got a lot of voltage, it's not too dangerous because it's not too power, you know, there's not too much current there. Still, you could get a shock, but it wouldn't bother you. No? Too. You hold the handle of the ice pick. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Okay. Now we'll take one of these wires that came from one side of our, our transformer and put it down here underneath this pipe plate and have a touch. Oh, so, so we can complete the circuit? So we'll complete the circuit. So now we have current 25,000 volts connected to this pipe plate. Mm -hmm. Now, the other side of, uh, of our transformer is connected over here to the ice pick. Yeah. So you should be able to hold it down here and get a spark to jump from here down to the pipe plate, and it'll burn a hole right in the paper. Okay. So you write W right there. This is 
is a W? Hmm. Good night. Well, you see what is happening, though? The paper is wrinkled up just a little bit, and when the current goes through here, it's so hot that it starts the paper on fire. Yeah, but 25,000. And 25,000 volts. Woo, I don't think that would start anything on fire. Now, uh, how would you like to be able to, or would you try to ring a doorbell using 25,000 volts or ring a buzzer? Well, that'd be impossible. You'd burn the whole thing up. Or right. Or... So if we wanted to ring this buzzer over here, we couldn't use that 25,000 volts from that Whoa. transformer. We use another type of transformer. You mean this here? This kind. This one takes 120 volts from the house current and steps it down. In other steps words... Steps down. First we went up. up. Now, now we're, we're going, going down, down to come out with six volts. Six volts. Oh, and well, that we, could ring it. That'll ring the buzzer. Now, before we ring the buzzer, though, um, have you followed all the rules of good health lately? Of course, Mr. Wilson. I get plenty of sleep and exercise, fresh air, water and rest, plus three well-balanced meals every single day. Well, um, let's just check up on you using this transformer. How Here. can you... You remember this? Oh, sure, I remember that. That was that muscular tremor machine, was it? Yeah. Sure. How does you, it work? You had an ice pick, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I'll get, just a minute, I'll get the ice pick for you. And you show me how oh, this works. Oh, I remember that one, Mr. Wizard. You got it? There. Okay, well, I took the ice pick. Mm -hmm. And I stuck it in these holes. Here, yeah. like this. And whenever the ice pick touched either side, well, like that, mm -hmm. uh, that completed the circuit mm -hmm. and made the buzzer buzz. Buzz, that's right. We call this a muscular tremor machine because the more your muscle vibrates and moves up and down, or the tired you get, the more tired you get, the more your muscles vibrate like this and the more times you would hit the side of the tin. See? Like that. And so a scientist can use it to test how tired you get. Now, this is just a sort of a homemade one, and it's not too accurate, but oh. it, it works on the same principle as the scientific testing instruments that they use in laboratories. Oh, you mean like the breakfast studies? In the breakfast yeah. studies, sure. You see, in that case, scientists, nutrition experts wanted to know what effect it would have to have a good breakfast as compared to what it would be when you didn't have any breakfast at all. So they used all kinds of scientific instruments on a, a series of tests on college boys and girls at a big yeah. Midwest medical school. And they found, as a result of these tests, that when you've had a good breakfast, you're able to work better, you're keener and sharper, and your muscles won't get so tired, especially during the late morning hours. Now, when you know the results of those tests, and you realize that when you've had a breakfast of fruit, cereal, milk, bread and butter, or other foods for variety like eggs or breakfast meats, that from a breakfast like that, you'll get from one-fourth to one-third of your whole day's food needs, why then I think you'll agree with me that it's smart to eat breakfast. Well, Mr. Wizard, uh, I had a good breakfast. Uh, can I try? Sure. Wait a minute. i got to connect the ice pick in here. You have to do this at arm's length now. Arm's length? Arm's length. And put just the point of the ice pick into the uh, hole. Wait a minute. Let's make sure it's working. Okay, it's working. Now you start. Very good. Now, what if you didn't have any breakfast? Well, um, maybe go like this. Well, you're exaggerating it a little bit oh. now. But that's the general idea, and that's yeah, how scientists can, can test muscular tremor. Mm -hmm. Now, we used a transformer here. Yeah, to um, step down. Mm -hmm. To step down, Oops. where's the vibrator? Well, it's, um, I think it's in here, right in there. No. No vibrator in here at all. How does this transformer work? Every time we've changed current over here from one voltage to another, we've had some kind of a vibrating, a make-and-break device. What is it that does it here? You caught me, Mr. Wizard. Do you know of any kind of electric current that goes back and forth and back and Oh, yeah, forth? that's AC. Well, you know, we use it Alternating current, ordinary current. Is that your circuit breaking? Using breaker? alternating current, you don't have to have the circuit breaking idea. Oh. In fact, here, remember when we put this, this uh, magnet over here in the coil? Mm-hmm. When we had a magnetic field that was moving, uh, uh, moving in this direction, we got a current. We got a current over here. Now, if we have alternating current that goes back and forth and back and forth, and we have the current first going in one direction through a coil and setting up a magnetic field, we have a buildup like this. A surge. A surge like that, and we have a current. Now then, the current turns around and goes the other way. In other words, it goes down to nothing and then builds up and goes in the other direction, so we have this sort of an effect. So we have alternating current back and forth and back and forth. And that's what automatically builds up our magnetic field and breaks it down again. So it was the AC, AC that, did it. that does it. I thought there was some machine in there. No, or not at all. Oh. In fact, it's because of this alternating current that I was able to ring that doorbell without having any connection between the two coils. Is that? Now is that, that you understand happened? about transformers, see if you can tell how 
this works right here. Well, now, actually, time, oh, wait a minute. But first, before, I used two transformers here. You did, Mr. Sure, Lee? this is a transformer right here. Yeah, that's one. This comes from the 120 volts, you know, yeah. that's in the house current. Now, in order to heat up, uh, to, uh, to put current through this wire, we heat it up if we had it too much voltage. See, there's no a light bulb or anything connecting here to no. sort, of, sort of hold back the current. So that's why I use this kind of transformer, because by turning, make sure it's off, by turning this knob, I can connect more and more and more and more coils, or less and less, depending on which way you turn. And this is called a variable transformer. A variable? A variable. In other words, you can start at zero volts and go all the way up to 120, depending on how many coils you have. Something in. like a rheostat? Well, it's kind of like a rheostat, but a rheostat adds more resistance. In other words, you make electricity go through more wires, and it, therefore oh. it, it prevents the electricity from going through, kind of like building up blocks in a dam to prevent something from coming through. But this time, in other words, we have a fixed number in our primary, and we can vary primary the number... Primary and the secondary. And we vary the number in the secondary. Well, just the opposite of what just we did over there. Because the secondary, we um, added on, shall we say? Well, well it's the same idea. Uh, we, we can just change the number of turns in our secondary with this. So, by turning this up to about, oh, 10 or 12 volts, we're running alternating current through here. Go back and forth, back and forth, building up a magnetic field around here. So now if we run this coil, like this, through the magnetic field in here, the magnetic field that's making and breaking, making and breaking, will generate a current in here, and it'll generate enough current to go up here and ring this doorbell, even though there's no connection. Oh. You see, there was a nail. I put a nail on the inside to help increase the magnetism. Oh. So now you understand it here. You okay. hold it and try it again. No wires. No, no connection. Plenty of wires, but oh. no, no connection. Okay, try it once. Tell my mom and dad. Now, the, really, this wasn't so, it wasn't so amazing as you, as you think it in the first place because this is a, a very much like the idea of the transformer that you used to ring the doorbell at home. So can I make one of these at home, Mr. Wizard? Well, you could, but the big problem, remember, you don't get something for nothing when you work with electricity or with anything else. Here, while we're, we can get 10 volts, you could probably get 10 volts from batteries. Yeah, oh, yeah, you can get a lot of batteries together. But you won't have enough amperage. You won't have enough current. So I, you can try it, but I don't think Maybe it would. Maybe get one of those current. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you understand something about how alternating current in transformers is very useful, let's go back and take a look at those transformers over there. Those big ones. Those small. big ones. And maybe now you will have much more appreciation for that black box or that gray box yeah. that sits back on your on the telephone pole in the backyard. No, I think it, you know, rain. What kind of a transformer did they have in the power station? Um, uh, second. No. Step. Down, yeah, step down. Because they sure. want the voltage to, to go, go from down. high down. You don't, you don't want it to go up. Okay. We go from 7,200 volts over here, and we want to come out of here with 120 volts. Sure. Which way are we going? Uh, down. down. Down again. Down. That's right. So this is another step down transformer. Now then we want to... No, so here's how... Here's the thing that makes possible for you to use voltage that was very high and actually toast toast and things like that. <laughs> now, we want to go from 120... Down to six. Down to six. For your train. So we have... Lo we have... Uh, a step down again. So you're Lots of coils down. in the primary and few coils in the secondary. How come you're always stepping down? Well, that's because we're trying to make the, the current, uh, the voltage, less and less and less to make it less dangerous. But sometimes we want to go back up at home. Well, can you? For instance, uh, sure. All you need is a transformer. You have a neon light like this around? Yeah. Fluorescent light? Sure. Well, in order to start a fluorescent light working, you have to have a couple of thousand volts. But you don't have a couple oh, thousand oh. volts coming in into your house from this transformer here. So they have a little transformer right inside the light fixture. Maybe there's a transformer right under that mm -hmm. uh, thing overhead? That's right. Ooh. So they take 120 volts, and when, the, when you turn on the light, there's a surge goes through here, and you get a couple of thousand volts out here to start the light lighting. And from then on, it works on 120 volts. Yeah, I didn't know that light fixture right had, there that, had that transformer. Then, um, that goes up. That steps that's up. That's right. Step up transformer. How about uh, an oil burner? You have an oil burner at your house? Oh, yeah. I, I thought I remember your dad talking about the oil burner. Well, you use a transformer there, too. Here it is right here. This is a step up hey. again. When the oil burner goes on, you have to make sure that there's fire there to start the oil. The oil. Right. Uh -huh. So you use a transformer with few windings in the primary, a lot of them in the secondary to what? Step up. Uh, step up. To get a spark to light the oil. So there's another example of a transformer. Right under my own oil. Right under your very So you see there... Oh, there's all kinds of other applications, transformers, all over the place in industry. They want all kinds of voltages, and actually all around the house, too. But now, let's have some fun using transformers. Oh, can you, Mr. Sure, you can have lots of fun with this transformer right here. 
that's a curious looking thing. Oh, I don't know what that is. What? Coil? That's the coil, and this is the primary. Coil, and that's the This primary. is the primary. Notice it has a lot of turns. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do to the card? Are we going to step it up or step, step it down? Uh, step it down? We're probably going to step it down. Now, where's your secondary? It, well, here's our secondary right here. This? Mm -hmm. One turn. One turn yeah. to your lots of turns. Lots primary. of turns in the primary. So what we'll do when we run alternating current through here, we're going to generate a lot of magnetism here. The magnetism is going to go through this aluminum ring. Now it, it's aluminum, so it won't be it won't be stuck over here to the to the won't magnet. Be magnetized. It won't be magnetized. But at the same time, we're going to have a little current going around here because there's magnetic field around it. It's going to generate a little magnetic field of its own because there's current going through it. Oh. And the the it, let's pretend this is a north pole. Then the magnetism around here will be the south pole. And what's going to happen? You catch it while I turn it off. Look, what's that high? Well, it'll go up high enough for you to catch. Okay. You ready? Yep. Say. Woo. Now just hold it up there. Okay. And there it sits. Look at that. Now, here's another example of a, of a, a, a transformer. The light when bulb. we use this coil of wire right here and this big coil down here. And you hold the light bulb. Okay. I want to run this coil down, or the uh, core Second. down, no, so that's it's not down the secondary. here. No, that's the core. That's the core. This is the primary. Here's the primary down here. When we set this up here, lines of magnetic force are going to cut through these wires here and generate enough current to actually light this light bulb. Where's the secondary on that? Right here. This is the secondary. Oh. In fact, we'll not only be able to light the light bulb, we'll be able to do it when it's underwater. You can, Mr. Sure, Wilson? you hold the light bulb and you drop it in there when I turn on the, okay. the current. Okay. Drop it. Yeah. It lit up. Sure. And as you pick it away, take it away, you'll, the magnetic force will be less, so it should fade out. Go ahead, should pick it? it up. It went out. Like a dimmer. Sure. So there you see, using a transformer and the strong strong magnetic field, you're able to go right through water and glass and actually light this light bulb. Mm -hmm. Well, Jeez, you can have a lot of fun with it. You can have a lot of fun with transform. And the steps, steps down, down, depending on the number of depending down. on the number of coils of wire in the primary and, and the, the secondary. secondary. And most transformers, you want to remember, work on alternating current. And they all have a primary and, and a secondary. secondary. Right. Oh. Well, I think now that you know all about transformers, mm. it's about time for you to run along. Oh, no, it's been so much fun today. Well, uh, what are we going to do next week, Mr. Wizard? Well, next week, I'm going to show you how you can build your own projector at home. A real projector? Well, it works at a real projector, sure. Hmm. In fact, here it is right down here on the floor. That, Mr. Wizard? Mm -hmm. hmm. All you need is an inexpensive magnifying glass from the dime store, and oh, that's yeah. right in here. Here's the handle right here, and the magnifying glass is in here. And here's what the inside of the projector looks like. See? It's got lights in it. Yeah. It's got like a tube. Yeah. See, there's a piece of paper at the end there. That's right. Notice what it's got written on it? Backwards upside, upside down. down. Backwards and upside down. Well, now let's actually project that. Close it up. And you can actually project all, any kind of picture you want. Let's project that right there on that screen. Now you walk up there and stand there, and I'll show you how to make this next week because we're going to talk about this. Next week, we're going to talk about a lens. Don't forget to be with us next week for another exciting program of mystery and magic in everyday things when the Serial Institute again invites you to watch Mr. Wizard. Oh yes, and by the way, Mr. Wizard lives in Chicago.